it's always a good idea to turn on your camera whenever you want to make a video. I just tried to make it and it didn't work out too well because I hadn't turned the camera on. Well, today I'm going to talk about the beehive and the standard beehive that everybody uses and most everybody. Commercial beekeepers, sideliners, and hobbyists all use this hive for the most part in the United States and over the world. The reason for that is they have movable parts and I'm going to discuss about how we can put one of these hives together. I'll show you how it works. Oh, here comes Charlie. Are you going to get in the video, Charlie? Huh? I wonder if you're in the video now. Okay, let's go check it out. I'm going to talk about a few things about how a beehive is put together. So let's start with a beehive here. Like I said, I'm just finishing up my coffee. I thought I'd get out here while the birds are still singing and the chainsaws aren't running and the lawnmowers aren't started up. So today I'm going to talk about the movable parts of beehive, particularly the Langstroth beehive. Langstroth beehive was developed by Reverend Langstroth. He made the beehive where the frames were interchangeable so that you could move one frame out of one hive and put it in another if you'd like. Everything was where it would fit together. I'm sure there's been more things made and it's been modernized, but it's still the most popular beehive in the United States and the world. So let's get started. But I'll have a sip of coffee first. Mmm. That's good. Well, right here, we have a bottom board. Now, Mr. Langstroth actually discovered what was called a bee space. Bee space is a three-eighths of an inch. If you put anything in a hive that was wider than three-eighths of an inch, then the bees would fill it up with comb. So basically, three-eighths of an inch is what he called bee space. So on this bottom board, we have just enough room for a bee to walk in and out. Now, a bee could probably get in between if it's a little smaller, like a quarter inch, but this gives them an appropriate amount where they're not going to build comb in between the bottom board and the bottom of the frames. On the other side, we have three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch allows you to put a reducer on the bottom board so that you can have three eighths of an inch opening if you want to reduce it down to a much smaller size. So this is a reducer. Basically it's three quarter of an inch this way and this way. But if you look here, there's three eighths of an inch deep here in this little slot and also on this one here. So you can turn it either way to make it so that bees will have more entrance or less entrance. This is used to reduce that opening in the case of when there's a weaker hive and larger hive nearby or it's cold and you want to have it warm inside the hive. Inside the hive the bees keep it temperature between 92 and 95 degrees year round in the cluster of bees. So I'm going to take this reducer and put it right here and pretend that it's a cold day and I'll just put a small opening there. Now my other opening is completely closed here because it's turned that way but if I turn that this way, it's going to be wider, so I have this much space for the bees to go in and out. So depending on which way you put it, if it's cold day, you put it like that. I think I've got that lined up. And the next thing we have is a super. Now a super, I'll put my coffee, let me get the last sip. There, we're done with the coffee. A super is a box. Basically, it can be three different sizes. This is the main one here, and it came, contains all the frames. So you put that on top of your bottom board like that. And then you adjust your entrance here 
so you have just enough, enough space. <laughs> Pushed it in too far. Okay. There. The bottom super is generally called a brood chamber because that's where the queen usually goes to lay her eggs and that's where the brood is raised. Well beehives come in two different sizes and therefore supers come in different sizes. But this is a 10 frame beehive. This one here is an 8 frame beehive. Well it's a super for an 8 frame beehive. So you see that it's narrower but it generally fits the same way. So your brood chamber would also be an 8 frame. But for now, we're going to put this aside. We're not using 8 frames today. This is a 10 frame hive. And what I've got in it is actually not 10 frames. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 frames in this hive. The reason for that is that there's a feeder in here. So this is a frame feeder. It replaces two frames in this hive, the way it fits. You can get them where they replace one frame, but this one replaces two. So if you have a weak hive or a new hive, say you just put a nuke in, then they have to fill out that foundation. So let's talk a little bit about foundation. Well, we've got a couple sizes here. There's a just plain foundation. It's plastic. It's wax coated. You can get it all wax. Or, in some cases, if you've got old plastic that hasn't been coated recently, the bees won't build on it. These that I get are double coated. But now I've had some for a couple years and they haven't been used, so I'll have to coat them again. Or the bees won't build it properly. They'll build out kind of a, well, they don't even stick it to it sometimes. It's just hanging on the edge here. So there's a place behind it. And that kind of messes things up because it makes it hard to get the frames in and out. Again, we have a couple different sizes because they're different size boxes. This is your 10 frame super. It goes on top like that. So in this one, you would put this size frame in. And if you have this one here, it's even smaller. This one's called a medium super, and this is called a shallow super. So there are frames that are shorter that will go in a shallow super also. Shallow supers are usually made for comb honey where the bees build the comb all by themselves. They just hang, you put, the, you put the frames in and the bees make the wax comb all by itself and then you can cut it out and use it for comb honey. But we're gonna set that aside because we're not doing that today. And let's see, let's put this back up here. So conceivably, you could put another deep body here on top. If that was the case, this hive was totally full of bees and brood, or 70% full anyway, then you would need to put another super on it that would also be called a brood chamber if it was going to be used for that. A little further south, people use the medium for a brood chamber if they're overwintering. But here in North Carolina, where I live in the mountains, it gets colder, so we use a deep one like this one here for our second one. You can put more supers on here and stack them up so anything above the brood chamber will be for you for your honey. Anything in the brood chamber would be for the bees. So if you've got a super that has honey in it, no brood, they're going to need that over the winter. Generally speaking, most people in my area use a deep and then another deep on top for their brood chamber. So if we're going to use a second deep for a brood chamber, we put it on like this. And that would get 10 frames in here because this is a 10 frame hive. And then on top of that, you would have your honey supers. 
that could be the shallow super like that or it could be a medium super like that and you can even have two medium supers or three depending on how high you want to go and how much honey you want to store before you harvest it generally I think three is about the maximum most people go but in the case here if you want to have some comb honey you could put this one here too on it so now you've got two brood chambers it can be either a deep brood chamber and a medium or a deep brood chamber and a deep brood chamber those are both going to be for the bees to overwinter with anything above that is going to be for your honey harvest there are two different types of covers that are popular with the Langstroth hive actually in this case it's two different covers but this is what they call an inner cover it goes on top of the hive like that in the summertime there's a slot here for ventilation it comes up through this hole right here and goes out through here in some cases you would turn it over if you want an extra opening here and then you could put something here above this a little say four pennies one on each corner to give the ventilation on top of that you would put your outer cover so your outer cover goes on like this and I generally push get it lined up and then if it was heavier it would stay in one place I slide this back and then push it forward to make sure there's room up here in the front so there's one more cover remember this is the outer cover so we'll take that off and we'll put it aside and this is the inner cover we'll put that off the side this cover here is called a migratory cover it goes on like this right on top there's no ventilation there but again you can put ventilation on I'll show you in just a second this is usually used by commercial beekeepers because they can strap the whole thing together and move the entire hive if they want to and we'll wait for the airplane to go over back in the day there weren't airplanes around here back in the 80s when I built this house but we have them all the time now a lot more people in the world than there were back in the 80s okay the airplane is just about gone now and I hear the birds again this one here is a migratory cover it comes off like that and goes on like that relatively simple it does have a lid here that you can poke a couple of small holes in top maybe a sixteenth of an inch or smaller maybe a couple thirty seconds of an inch and then you put a jar on it with sugar water in it to feed the bees during the dearth a dearth by the way is when there's no pollen or honey flow well we have to explain that too honey flow is when there's lots of pollen and nectar out for the bees to collect now if the migratory cover is on it then the commercial beekeeper can wrap the entire thing up with a strap and move it of course they probably already harvest the honey and so they've taken these three off and just have the double deep down there or even a single deep but then they put the lid on it and I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see how to ventilate it when it's hot and the bees need a little more ventilation you can lift the lid like that and then they have space in here for the moisture to come out and the heat to come out of the hive remember they want the temperature inside the hive at 92 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit so that's pretty much it for the Langstroth hive today of course you would have to have bees in it <laughs> if you found this video helpful I hope you'll push three little buttons the subscribe button, the thumbs up button, and the little bell. That way you'll be notified when a new video comes on. I sure appreciate it. If you do all that, you'll encourage me to make more videos. Thank you very much. Have a good day.